So when planning this battery, I wanted a good foldable connection, which has been done with nickel a lot of times, but I wanted to specifically avoid using nickel in anything because it's a lot higher resistance than copper is. So since I'm using copper for everything else on the battery, I wanted to just stick to that low resistance material for everything. But there wasn't a good way that I had seen to do a foldable connection. The way that people do it with nickel is they just stick both halves of the battery next to each other and spot weld a single sheet across them and then just fold that sheet over. Or they do the same thing with the strips and they just stick the strips right across the folded joint and fold that over. Uh, copper has a harder time doing that. It, it doesn't like to just bend in the spot that you want it to. It is a reasonably malleable material, but it's not nearly as malleable as nickel, so you can't really treat it the same way. So I kind of ruled out the option of folding the sheet because that would put way too much stress on my battery cells, the connections that I welded to them. So I, I came up with this. This is two separate copper sheets that have copper braid soldered between them. Now there was a lot of good and bad that I learned from doing this. I think this is something that we can keep doing and, and have a lot of good success with, but there is some key points that I need to make sure get across. First off, I made sure to make my copper braid sections just a little bit longer than they needed to be, so that when I push the battery together, it compresses them a little bit rather than pulling on them. If it pulled on them at all, it would do a lot of damage to the connections for sure, and that would not be good. We wanna avoid any pressure being put onto, the, onto those sheets anytime that we can. Now, when you first solder them, if you do them this short like this, it is uh, not super easy to bend right at first because it's all tinned with copper. Um, that's okay. You just need to work it a little bit and then you can move it just fine. Um, there is another key detail that I learned um, with the way that I did it specifically with these two sides folded over next to the battery cells that could have actually been really bad if I didn't catch it when I did. Um, it, what happened was these these points that fold all the way over, that sharp edge kind of dug into the sides of the cells. And if you know about how cylindrical cells work, the outside is part of the negative terminal. So if the positive side of the battery cell finds a way to contact the outside of the case, um, it will short and could start a fire, could do a lot of bad things. So the way I remedied it is I stuffed in these acrylic sheets underneath there. It's fairly thick acrylic and it definitely won't be rubbing through it. It's really solid now. There's no way that can be touching the sides through that acrylic. But I noticed it because when I went to go spot weld these two halves of the battery together, um, I saw a little spark and actually like two or three little sparks and I couldn't figure out why I did a bunch of checking with the multimeter and stuff. If you've watched the uh, battery build video, then you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I couldn't figure out what it was for a second. And then I saw a little black spot on the side of one of the cells where it was contacting. Um, luckily, it was just that simple and easy, not a big deal. Just a little tiny spark like that wasn't enough to cause any issues. Um, but it was scary for sure, because if I wouldn't have got that, it could have been bad. So just keep that in mind when doing this. You don't want any chance for those to touch the sides of the battery cells. I thought about putting my battery halves on opposite sides. So these would fold around the outside and then have connections across here. But that's a long ways to bridge that series connection. And especially compared to all the other ones, I didn't want to deal with that because the longer it bridges, the more resistance you can build and so it's equal to a smaller amount of copper. So I thought this worked really well. Um, as far as folding, I mean people don't usually fold their nickel connections many times because it's bad for them. And I ended up folding this thing together and apart like four or five different times with no issues. So I, I really liked how well that worked. It didn't seem to weaken the connections at all when I did. It looked really good the whole time. And it was really solid enough to to brace it. It really worked like a really nice hinge. So, um, plus if you've done it with nickel before and you fold it in half, pretty much any sheet, when you fold it in half and then fold it back open, it doesn't just fold back out straight. You get like these weird bumps and then the more you do that, the more you get weird bumps and then you'll have this like kind of roughed up material. 
it's not pretty. Um, not that this is pretty either, but uh, it, it saves us from having some of that weird stuff going on because no matter how many times I fold this, well, I'm sure there's a point for sure, but with, with the amount of times that I folded it, it didn't change anything. It looks the same. Overall, I think it worked really well and I would do the same thing again on other battery builds. I think it's a great way to make all of your connections copper and just fully get rid of nickel. There's no reason to be using nickel on high discharge applications because of the resistance and heat buildup that you get from it. Anytime that we can stick to copper, that's always gonna be better. So um, this gives us the option to have that crossover connection be copper too. I'm not claiming to be the first one to try this. I haven't seen anyone do it, but I can't imagine no one has done it. I mean, this is kind of a problem that I feel like a lot of people have thought about of just how to avoid nickel in that scenario. So let me know if you've tried it or if you've tried other things to get around it. I think you could also get away with uh, spot welding the braid in whatever way and maybe doing a bolted connection with eyelets attached to the braids however you want a lot of people say that the bolted connections are a lot better for high amp applications so if you're one of the people that thinks that then great do that i'm not saying that's wrong or right i i haven't done the testing to decide but i just know that a lot of people who know what they're talking about claim soldered is better or bolted is better and it really depends on who you talk to i feel like that's the case with a lot of things um you could definitely have success with either i know that much so if you haven't caught the rest of this build the build video went into all of the details about this battery build and I have another video about what you need to know to build your own. And stay tuned for the rest of the bike build. I just placed the order for a bunch of aluminum laser cut parts that I'll be TIG welding together. I designed them up in CAD and we'll be fitting them up into the bike and then this battery is getting mounted, the motor is getting mounted. Once all that stuff shows up, it'll, it should move pretty quick to finish this thing out. and. Uh, We'll start testing. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.